Okay, we actually gonna start the game, guys. So let me get a sec. Good. So what you can see here is well, first I welcome you as a moderator today. Yeah, and uh, moderator today. Um, this is a specific. Um, yeah, it's like as you know, this is like my first time moderating a game because usually I don't do that. So the guys actually approached me directly and asked me because like um, yeah, this was kind of an emergency case. So now I'm here and I hope it will be as entertaining as my stream usually is. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Yeah, so this is the Hearthstone Champions League. Yeah, and how it works is it's like um, persisting out of four groups, out of four players, and we are playing the group stages here. Two out of four players, out of those four players, will eventually advance. Yeah. Um, first match, as you can see, Colento Rogue against uh, Hoi Paladin, and yeah, we are very much looking forward to that. So the classes the guys are playing, Colento actually brought Rogue, Warrior and Paladin and Hoi actually brought Druid, Warrior and Paladin. Yeah. What we can actually see here, which is very quite surprising, is like the Warrior lineup from both um, players. Yeah, unfortunately I don't have like very nice gimmicky overlays here to show you what's going up with the classes, but um, both players bring Warrior is um, very interesting in that regard that um, patron actually should be yeah quite much more difficult to be played. So if it's warrior, it could possibly be control warrior. So yeah, um, you get the idea. So we will definitely see what's going on there. Okay, first match, Colento picked um, Rogue into who is secret paladin, and yeah, I mean it's. A very very nice matchup, simply because um, I mean I wouldn't say it's exactly even, but it's really skill heavy and dependent on draws and how you can actually utilize the um, yeah the power for example Rogue has. Um, this guy's playing skill being of extreme importance. Can you actually see that? I should also check whether you can see everything. Okay. Yeah. Keep also in mind that the casting and the overlays will eventually get better because like um yeah obviously everything had to um yeah we needed to set up everything. Yeah. Okay. So Yeah, Colento's hand obviously also very suitable against Secret Paladin. You see Fan of Knives here, which are of tremendous importance, like board clear, but even better board clear. Um, even being able to be combined into possibly Blood Mage preparation, Tylenos, um, uh, Fan of Knives actions. In this case, he opted in for that play, which is, well, much, much, um, yeah, much more the tempo play. And also, of course, keeping the ability to keep Thanos up into Fan of Knives later. Um, I mean, both players are actually playing quite quickly. <laughs> so, keeping up with the commentary will not be an easy task, but we'll see. So, um, Consecration from Hoi going down there. Um, yeah, standard value. And, yeah, what, what could Colento here do? So, Again, because Hoi didn't play anything, um, Colento will have the ability to actually play Blood Mage Fan of Nice through the entirety of the game, but he's actually even opting in to play it. And it's a wise decision, because like otherwise the 3-1 would have fallen. So he either preserves the 3-1 or gets like uh, Tempo Blood Mage onto the board, which can uh, be cycled into like into a card later, but obviously it can also be used for Fan of Knives into Eviscerate next turn, which is of course very strong. Um, who is Hand, Blessing of Kings, being a dead card as long as he cannot utilize it onto a minion. So that's like a dead card at the moment. Also, it's kind of a tempo card and Colento being a 26, where well, you can double guess yourself. 
Um, also, no other place that turn, which is also quite clunky. I mean, he got the secret challenger or the mysterious challenger in the hand, but he um, could not keep it up to assure like board control and mysterious challenger obviously the more board control you have um, the stronger he is because the secrets are usually offensive secrets and the more board control and the more aggression you got in the early game the stronger the secrets and respectively the mysterious challenger also becomes um, so now you can see that Colento actually assured to counter the early aggression and should usually have like now a really really good chance to win that game even despite the mysterious challenger coming down here so he will probably proc the um, defender with his weapon then the mysterious challenger will get 9-8 and will eventually get zapped um, the last get down will then uh, get revived but then probably killed by something like for example an SI7 um, agent. So that's probably the play we can expect from um, from Colento here. So Zap on the challenger and SI7 on the um, yeah on the small dude. Attacking phase basically also at the same moment um, setting up uh, for a potential lethal. Is it? Yes, it would be. So if nothing happens, it would be lethal next turn. Um, yeah, simply because of a weapon and then blade flurry into a viscerate. So dagger up attack, blade flurry into a viscerate. Um, what can Hoi actually do to prevent that? And well, I mean, we see Challenger, Belcher. The secret which is not popped um, should be the um, yeah. The stuff which gives all minions plus one plus one if you have any minions left during your turn, which will probably yeah, not be the case very often in this game. So at the moment Colanto definitely has the lead, has the board control, has the means in his hand to also handle whatever would or could come down. So it's looking pretty pretty nice. So you see a secret challenger coming down here, um, and it should be another defender, right? It should be another defender. Um, poison is probably sealing it. It's, it should be lethal. Like dagger up, poison, attacking phase, defender comes down, but then blade flurry into viscerate um, will exactly do the job. Actually, blade flurry into viscerate would have also done the job. Um, well, without. Um, without running the poison, so he actually didn't even need to do so. Okay, and that leads to a 1 0 from Colento for now. Um, That leaves the following classes. Yeah. Leaves the following classes. So we are playing a conquest format here, and how a conquest format uh, uh, works for those people uh, who don't know it um, already. Like um, you have to clear your decks out. So everybody, like Hoi and Colento, both need to actually clear all of their decks out. And um, as I actually said before, um, Colento still has let me check so um, yeah so Colento um, just cleared his rogue which um, leaves him with warrior and paladin left we will actually be um, yeah very looking forward for also Colento's paladin build which could be secret uh, paladin or midrange paladin Hoi of course needs um, still to play um, and to clear all his three classes druid warrior paladin respective so we have warrior and paladin against druid warrior and paladin how does that work? Well, depending on which classes they are, um, no. depending on which classes they are, they have different matchups. So this will be, yeah, simply something we have to take a look on. Mm.
yeah, waiting for the next game. Usually I should have like uh, two or three castles with me and uh, whenever I don't talk they should be able to entertain you guys, but <laughs> in this case it's not possible, so... Um, okay. So, 1-0 for Roy. Um, yeah, I can just say something also to the other players of the group. So... Oh, uh, perhaps I can also just tell you uh, first about those two players. So, Colento, yeah, do I really have to tell you about Colento? Yeah, I mean... Colento, yes, old school and new school player, always world class, always on the top of his game, specialists of like some classes, but usually an all round player, good with everything. And um, yeah, I mean, that's what Colento is. Hui, for those who don't know, I mean, he made his appearance like, yeah. Not infinitely long ago, but he was um, actually always around. Not, not like publicly known, of course, but he was always a very good ladder player and also performing very nicely. Also won the Wire Game House Cup um, and like one one of the Wire Game House Cups, which was also pretty quite of an achievement and yeah, pretty successful on ladder also nowadays. So both players of very strong playing strength. Um, so it's always nice to actually watch um, strong players play. Yeah. So Colento we see here, cool taskmaster, shields them, execute, that looks like a control warrior. Yeah. And we uh, have that, well, against the secret paladin we just saw. So Hoi actually decided to queue with the same deck again, the mind games. Perfect hand for here. Very good hand for Colento also, depending on what happens. Yeah, both both players, this is lovely, this will be a lovely game. Both players having incredibly nice hands. Hui having like, uh, as a second to act, oh he actually decides not to go for the uh, coin into two drop, but he could have had coin into two drop, into two drop, into three drop, into four drop. So, extremely nice. Um, Colento, I mean, if you see his hand, it's the same. It's a two-drop weapon for Warrior into Ecolite of Pain, into Death Bite, into Sludge Belcher. Yeah, so both hands being insane. Yeah, the match are probably a break even, a 50-50. So, yeah, it will be a really, really nice match for sure. So, we'll see um, come, uh, the Ecolite coming down and... Yeah, well, what is to be said about this matchup? I mean, usually, so fatigue doesn't take any kind of role. Yeah, fatigue won't matter in that matchup. It will come to a um, showdown earlier than fatigue, and if it comes to a showdown, like the longer the game prolongs, the better it gets for the warrior. Unlike other mid-range paladins, so a normal mid-range paladin has the tools to actually fatigue warrior. So they have enough answers so they can simply wait, always answering the single warrior threats and eventually fatigue them. But the secret warrior, uh, the, sorry, the secret paladin is um, different in this regard. So the secret paladin has um, more low value cards, hence uh, not being able to outvalue the warrior throughout the entirety of one game, which means the longer the game prolongs, the better it will get for Warrior. There will be a point where Paladin will run out of threats eventually. We already see Tuvian here in Hui's hand, so probably the moment where Hui will run out of cards will be exactly turn 8 or turn 7 respective with a coin if he decides to do so. So the game will prolong till turn, um, like will go into turn 8, Tyrion drop, till turn 9. Um, Hoi probably has like time till turn 9 to actually make a decision for this game. If it doesn't decide by turn 9, chances that Colento will win that are very, very high. Okay, now we see So Hoi actually drawing the mysterious challenger and that's pretty, pretty important, right? I mean, it's the strongest deck of the deck, uh, the strongest cards of the deck. And also, if you take a look at Hoi's curve, this is what he needs to perhaps force a decision till turn 9. 
Okay. You also also collect to not being able to make use of the echo light of pain, which is of tremendous importance. Yeah, he needs to draw a lot of cards. He needs to um, get the cards which are actually needed to stabilize. Um, and you saw um, the death bed already coming down, using uh, also being used, um, creating the opportunity for a possible whirlwind. And you see Belchers, which can actually prolong the game. Baron get on incredibly strong card against Paladin if you um, manage to stabilize until this game state. Bash all cards, which actually prolong the game. Unstable Ghoul, incredibly strong. So we just see both players here just drawing exactly what they need. So Colento decides to keep on the death by the weapon, which is, which is a great move because um, it forces Paladin um, into a position where he can never overexpand. So, for example, here, if he would have used the death bite, probably um, Colento would have gave Hoye the opening to actually go into Master for Battle into Shielded Mini Bot because Colento doesn't have like a brawl in his hand that would have been pretty, pretty bad for him. Yeah, with a follow up Mysterious Challenger that would have probably lost the game. But Colento made the uh, correct and also nice decision to keep on the world in charge. To actually prevent such things like that. And now Hoi is in a situation where he actually has to consider whether to uh, play the Mysterious Challenger, but then obviously the Tyrion Fordering would get delayed by a complete entire turn. And Tyrion Fordering being like the strongest card against Control Warrior, it will get really difficult for him. Okay, so but he decides for the Mysterious Challenger because um, he cannot drop the other ones into a whirlwind weapon. Okay. Well, <laughs> Coletta just draw the, drew the second Armorsmith, which is insane. <laughs> it's just insane. Armorsmith with Belcher is already extremely strong. Double Armorsmith with Belcher? Exactly. Double Armorsmith with Belcher and Whirlwind? And double Armorsmith with Belcher and double Whirlwind? Yeah, you get the point. It's, it's insane. Yeah. At this point, I guess it looks pretty bleak for Hui. Yeah, the double armor smith into so many whirlwinds into Baron Gedon. Colento just has like everything he needs. Yeah. It's really nothing he would wish uh, he could wish for more. I'm also curious what the land play here could be. So Yeah, I was really wondering, right? I mean you could have also played the armor smith before, but was the idea behind it? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So he played the armor smith afterwards, missing off one armor, but I guess it had to do something with the distribution. So you wanted to, he wanted to play the BGH for sure. Now he ended up to play um, BGH, Execute and Armor Smith and he... Uh, I think that had to come down anyways, right? Oh, it's difficult to say. Like in the worst, in the worst um, case he lost one armor, but um, perhaps he planned to do or to play another play if, if the distribution of the event would have been different. Okay. So, yeah, Hoi, of course, putting minions on the board, that's, that's what um, Secret Paladin does. Yeah, that's very strong. Putting a Belcher, protecting those two Armorsmiths. Yeah, the Armorsmiths will probably create trillions of armor, guys, trillions. But a lot. Yeah, and yeah, the game is over. Yeah. Even even despite um, Hoi having Tyrion in the hand, which is actually... I mean, the thing is, of course, you could argue, yeah, if Colento doesn't draw anything, like absolutely nothing, um, eventually Tyrion could uh, make the difference. But usually Control Warrior has so many big guys that it's extremely rare that Colento will simply draw dry card after dry card. And also he will have a lot of time, given the board state.
Hmm. That's a good question, right? Perhaps, perhaps Colander will simply would simply want to put Baron Gallo on the board, and then it simply Wrath has everything. And it's also funny. Usually, it would damage you for two, but in this case, <laughs> in this case, you just gain like uh, four armor. Is it? Or how much? How much was it? Yeah, I think it was four armor. Okay. And Godlento also wins another one, making it 2-0. Uh, yeah, it's a 2-0 lead, and um, the remaining classes are. Dum. Yeah. Colento has to clear his Paladin, and we are already looking forward for his Paladin. Whereas Hui has to clear everything. Yeah. It also depends on what kind of warrior Hui is playing. We will also be looking forward for that. And yeah, this is live. It's not a replay, of course. Um, um, so. Oh yeah, I wanted to say something about the groups. Um, so the groups actually, um, yeah, as I said, like this uh, this tournament, which is called the Hearthstone Champions League, it's like a, a 10k dollar tournament, uh, 10k dollar online tournament, also um, organized from Russian side. 16 players are actually invited. Actually, we could even so go, let me check. So, yeah, the groups being like uh, Group A, consisting out of Colento, Surrender, Pavel and Hoi. And, um, yeah, Colento and Pavel, uh, uh, Colento and Hoi now playing, Surrender and Pavel. Um, yeah, I mean, you also know those guys. Surrender being an Asian player, also very strong. He will make more and more appearance, I think, and uh, Pavel. He was the player from the European qualifiers. You ought to know him from there. Yeah. Pavel also a home player because he is from Russia, so that's huge in this regard. We see Colento playing Ginny of Zephyrus, or how do you whatever pronounce them. Um, that's a pretty interesting one. I really am curious what his devilish plans are, yeah, or whether he just wants to troll us. But uh, probably, yeah, perhaps it's it's part of both. Um, so we have like a mirror, but. I mean, I just wanted to call it a mirror, but I don't think we can actually call it a mirror after we saw the genies of Zephyrus. Colento going creeper here, plan 
perhaps to send it into the secret keeper. We will see. We know that um, Hui actually doesn't have any secrets in his hand, but we know that Hui actually had like one drop into two drop, which was actually now enabled because like Colento uh, put on the spider. I mean, we know that, but like uh, if Colento would have actually gone for the knife juggler, yeah, then he could have cleared the secret keeper for free. But again, like it's it's not likely that Hui couldn't have handled the secret uh, the, the knife juggler or didn't have like any secrets in the hand. We knew, but Valento of course didn't. He cannot see the cards. Um, perfect perf here from Hui because of that. Turn one secret keeper into turn two all into turn three master into turn four shredder into well, blessings and then into the challenger. So um, yeah, I already told you that whoever gets the aggressive part in this matchup usually will usually win. And well, at the moment it looks pretty good for Hui and that he will have the ability to actually do that. Simply because Master is so incredibly powerful for the board presence and board control. It simply seizes board control and um, and you can also with your um, with your weapon convert life into board set, which is also of really big importance. Hui can opt in for Blessing of Kings or for the Shredder. Blessing of Kings actually enabling an incredibly good trade here. So I wouldn't even blame him for simply playing Blessing of Kings and hitting the Secret Keeper. Especially because otherwise Hui would need to actually sacrifice his entire board just to get rid of the Secret Keeper. Uh, and he would do so, because like letting the Secret Keeper leave, uh, leave it pro and not using the weapon is probably not the best idea. So you see a Blessing of Kings coming down here and cleaning up the Secret Keeper. And yeah, and of course it's life, guys. I mean, if it wouldn't be life, I would just stop the game every turn and talk about it five minutes. But under these circumstances, I'm not able to do so. So you also realize that I'm talking twice as fast as usually. Yeah, that's not life coach speed here. All right, so Colento here with the decision. Well, with the decision. Yeah, I mean there are two decisions, right? I mean pilot to trader or peacekeeper. But I also think that pilot to trader is the way to go here. Well, actually, it's quite close to be honest. Yeah. But I think that's the right decision. Yeah, there is only eventually the shredder. Uh, a little bit unfortunate that Avenge um, did get drawn from Hoi simply because, yeah. Now he has doubles and mysterious challenger won't be able to actually retrieve another secret. So that's that. Yeah. And we have the Ginny of Zephyrus. If he can really play them and play the Blessing of Kings, I also think that Colento probably runs double Blessing of Kings. Could that be? Well, probably yes, right? It only makes sense to run Double Blessing of Kings if you have the Genies and I would not be surprised if he would also run twice this card which actually buffs for 3 attack. What did he say? This is no place for... yeah, whatever. Okay, so... I'm really also <laughs> curious. Like, oh, what, what do the, the genies do if you put something on another minion, right? So it's not if you put something on that minion. Okay, Mysterious Challenger comes down. Colento has the option to... Well, is out of options. Yeah, so that's the thing, right? I mean, because he fall behind, that's what happens. Now, the best play would probably cock hammer uh, and then attack face. Peacekeepering the mysterious challenger and eating something with the jinns. Something being probably the force three. So, this is probably what you will see here. First, cock hammer, then, cock hammer attacks face. But it doesn't matter what it attacks. Core camera simply attacks something. Um, the guy jumps out and gets revived. And you will see a peacekeeper on the 6 6 and the djinn eating the 4 3. But it probably still won't be. Uh, I mean, Colin is still at 14. It will 
not be immediate lethal and the taunt for sure helps so it could actually get close yeah could actually get close i think once colento gets to the Tyrion by turn eight like if he only survives two more turns we also saw how he just uh, drawing complete trash like uh, <laughs> Uh, that card was definitely not the card who he was looking for. I mean, was probably, well, the worst card in the whole deck, in the entire deck he could have drawn. Um, yeah, and it looks like, it looks like that Colento could eventually still stand a chance. Like, um, it's really, it's really, this whole card was really of uttermost importance. Like, if it would have probably pretty much been, a, not anything else, but something which could have actually delivered aggression. I mean, we, we will still see. I mean, it's, it's this, like, super close, this game. Like, Colento goes down to nine. Or is it, yeah. I mean, actually, probably it's still, yeah, it's probably not even enough anyways, yeah. Yeah, no, it's not even enough. We, we see the Dr. Boom not coming down, but also it would have not been enough anyways. Yeah. Colento being at 9 life, so he can probably simply not turn around the inevitable. The life count is just not high enough, where he pressured the entire game, so that's... Yeah, it was also what was expected, but for us guys, that's awesome, because that means we will actually see another of those games. And of course, more Genies of Seafarers. Um, I'm really curious how good or bad they are, so I'm also definitely looking forward for more of that. Yeah, also it would be more interesting with, with face cams of the players and I'm actually already requested that. So it seems that this is somewhat in work and perhaps we will have the luxury to, to get face cams in the, yeah, in the follow-up matches. Which would be quite awesome, right? I mean, good. Colento is known for not um, having too many... How do you say reactions? Or being not that emotional, so probably a, a face game of Colento would be not ultra exciting, but still it's always nicer than just having a picture, right? Okay. So we're going into the next match, which is uh, in the next game, which is actually Colento's Paladin against the Druid. And usually Secret Paladin should be favorite here. With this hand, yeah, with this hand, two, of course. I mean, it has like shielded mini bot by turn two, which is awesome. Into core camera, turn three, which is awesome. It has mysterious challenger already in the hand, which is very important. Just because you have this Doctor Six, which simply seizes the board then. On the other hand, we have Hoi. And Hoi already has like one acceleration, accelerator on the coin. Which is also really important, especially against Paladin, the Danassus is especially strong. We see him actually keeping everything. Oh no, no, actually, yeah, okay, I was just wondering, yeah, it, it, it would have been surprising. He actually mulling uh, Wrath away, he also, uh, he also mulling the Keeper away, which is interesting, because you sometimes could need it for stuff like, um, for stuff like a Knife Juggler, for example. And also Thorson went into the muck, despite being on the coin. But he knows that Thorson is too slow against Secret Paladin, so that was definitely the right decision. Now oh, the shapeshift comes down on the bot, and here you see why it's well, why the Nasus is quite nice because you can actually clear the bot. Um, but we also see that Colento drew like the master, and yeah, that's just insane. 
especially Hoi drawing like three, three, seven drops. I don't think, um, yeah, oh, yeah, no, no, he also draws a six drop. Yeah, that's quite unfortunate and will also definitely seal the deal. I really don't see, like with Colento already having Dr. Six in the hand and Hoi actually not doing anything the whole early game, I don't think we will be able to see a game five, as unfortunate as it sounds. So what's the best play here? Well, Colento has a weapon equipped, but he also has like somewhat 11 weapon charges in his hand, which is pretty nasty. I think the options for him are not that much to play the core camera, I think. I think the options are to either play Master and a Secret, or to produce a minion and play double secrets. Which one's better? It's interesting, right? He really goes for the Master for Battle and it, it works out. It happens to be the monster move because uh, Hoi indeed doesn't have... Oh my god, he just threw it. That's insane. That's insane. Like if Frodon would be my co-caster now, <laughs> which would probably never happen because if I would cast with Frodon, um, I would be always the co-caster, but um, he would have made it like so ultra, ultra insane now. Yeah, the sound effects. So what you just saw is indeed incredible because that was actually like the way for Roy to actually come back. Like exactly that, like and only that. Like Colento playing the Master for Battle into the swipe who it does, didn't have. Like that was the way. Like if there was any way in this game to actually prolong, you just saw it. Yeah. So now everything is turned. Colento actually drawing only well, quite bad cards, reactive cards like Consecration, which actually don't do anything or don't contribute anything to or against the Druid. And on the other hand, Roy drawing the answer when he needed to draw it. Yeah, we need we see an all coming down. I wonder whether there are. It could have been worse than the owl. I mean, I'm sure there are cards which could have been worse, but the owl is pretty damn bad in this in this current situation. But it's funny because Colento really thinks about attacking it and probably doesn't want to attack it. And the reason for that is if Hui would have had a BGH which he just draw, um, then then uh, Hui could have shapeshifted onto one of those guys or wrath one of those guys actually and assure that the secret challenger would get the avenge buff. Yeah. He will probably do it even now. Even now you will probably see a wrath coming down on the 1-1 one, one taunt guy and hoping that the avenge hits the lord and if the avenge hits the lord the tables are completely turned. Probably Hoi will simply win then. So we, oh, oh, interesting, okay, it's Sylvanas, yeah. I mean, there are, there are two options, like, the one option being, I mean, I don't, I don't mind, I mean, uh, both things being definitely possible. I mean, the one option would have been for Rui to just wrath one of the guys and just hope for you 50-50. 50% -50. Yeah. to win the game. If the Lord would have get the buff, BGH coming down on the Lord and GG. Uh, on the other hand, of course, if the uh, Avenge would have gone on the other guy, probably it would have meant that Hoi would have lost here. So I actually even like the Sylvanas decision, probably. Because of the Sylvanas decision, actually, yeah, it loses tremendous amounts of life. But on the other hand, it gives the option to... It gives the option, like two options, actually. Yeah, Option number one being um, that if the Mysterian Challenger draws, for sure having a BGH, which can actually hit, and also it forces Colento to take um, yeah, a defensive step and actually attacking the Challenger, uh, attacking with the Challenger, Sylvanas. Okay. 
It's actually pretty interesting. Yeah? So Colento has like most of the board, but he doesn't have follow-ups. So now every single turn will matter. Yeah, in Huston, of course, turns usually matter, but in this case, it's of tremendous importance. Yeah, every single turn will make such of a difference. And of course, every single swipe he could eventually draw. So, now this is insanely great for Hoi because the buff actually, the event hit the guy who already... No... I mean, who already received the plus one plus one buff. And because that is the case, he can actually silence the 5-4 uh, into a 1-1 one, one now. And that's huge. Yeah, that's really huge. So now, yeah, it, it, um, it can really came down to Colento now drawing a good card. You see it's a peacekeeper, which is probably not exactly what Colento wanted to see. But it's also not that bad, of course. Yeah. Colento decides to take the offensive or yeah, the offense. We already see um, Hoi having an Ancient of War in his hand, which will also <laughs> come down. Delivering 10 10 resistance or toughness or whatever you call it and 10 health it's called health yeah 10 health polento has a total of 5 6 8 9 11 attack on the board which means if, if there won't be nothing coming up from the draw colento will be in well kind of a bad position actually which is very funny because at the moment he has everything but if you if you don't draw if you don't draw something which he can make use of, then this ancient of war is insane. Poses such an insane threat. Okay. Yeah, everything running into that. Jin's setting up lethal. And we are, we see, I mean we see there's a wrath. And the Rust can actually prevent the lethal. So there's for example the Dr. Boom and the Rust option. It's also to be mentioned that there is also a double savage roar. So for example if Dr. Boom into Rust would come down, there is a good... Well, what was the secret? Is the secret like... Oh, I didn't pay attention, unfortunately, I can also not see it, like what secrets... Oh, oh, I can actually see it, oh. <clears throat> okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, I never, I never used this spectator mode, but okay. So, there is an event, which means... Hmm, it's interesting, right? That means, that means Hoi actually is... is forced to play the instant of lore into heal. Or he could also shape. Sh no, shape shield is not. Uh, what? Ah, okay, interesting. No, that was actually not bad. But uh, <laughs> yeah, this. No, I like the line we took. Like the the option was like actually actually either to boom into that or. Um, yeah, perhaps even Keeper, Wrath, and so on and so on. Yeah, yeah. so that's like a 3-1 for Colento. And that means we go into the next match, which is actually between Surrender and Pavel. And then afterwards we will play the winner bracket first. So you will see Surrender versus Pavel and whoever wins you will then see playing against Colento. Okay. Hmm. 
No, I'm actually also participating in there. Oh, I'm also taking a short look at the chat. Usually moderators or casters don't do that, but I have the luxury to be able to do so. So, um, no, I'm actually participating in the tournament and uh, I'm in the group C. And obviously I won't cast my games or my match. So you will see me casting today and tomorrow, but you will see um, somebody else casting on day three. The bracket. I will ask for the bracket. So Okay, so we have here a battle file. You guys know what? I can also just give you... I mean, this is after the match, so I can give you... Um, yeah. yeah, I just give you my screen share, guys. I know it's not that professional usually if you um, cast it.